All right, update on the Belvedere. Uh, not a lot's happened. I showed you I did that patch the other day. Uh, windshield is out. Got that out. Um, did not get it out in one piece, and it was already broken anyways, so it's out. I'm going to throw that in the dumpster. That's obviously a throwaway, as well as the windshield seal was uh, cut up and cracked, so... Um, I'm going to be looking for new windshield seal, new door seals, new glass seals all around. So if you have recommendations, let me know on that. Uh, but it's uh, going to be pretty easy going forward now that that's out of the way. I'm going to uh, drop the steering column down and then I now have access to the bolts for the dash frame. So I can rock that down and then uh, undo all the plugs and wiring and miscellaneous stuff and it looks like the looks like the heater box and everything's already out so that's not that big of a deal and then I can then access underneath all the the wiper linkage and I can get the uh, wiper motor disconnected from the arms and pivots so I can get that all disassembled so we will continue from there um, I'm gonna get a different dash frame I don't know if I'm going to use the one out of the parts car or if I can just pick up another one. I know where I can get one for like 50 or 75 bucks. That's not rusty, so I'll probably just do that. And I'm going to use most of the components that are in this dash in the new one anyways. Um, for example, I think the trim will clean up um, and mostly just, mostly just the trim and the cluster. These are pretty basic dashes. They're not anything real fancy. They got some trim on them, but nothing... Nothing too uh, intricate or anything, so that's good. But we'll be disassembling that. Then we could take the uh, pedal assemblies out, brake pedal, and then I can undo the gas pedal. I could do that at any time. So, but anyways, a little bit further uh, planning and some updated information. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm going to wait and blast the engine bay and engine compartment and all that stuff. Um, so then right after that, and I need to do that rust repair under the battery tray, but after that I can then, um, prime it, then base clear, clear coat, or, or base, base coat, clear coat, excuse me. Um, and it'll be white, just like the rest of the car will be. So we will be doing that. Um, I'm undecided if I want to blast all this down yet. It's just extra time and extra money. I know I, I just do it myself, but, um... Even so, the the expense of running the big compressor with the diesel and just the expense of the media itself, it does add up pretty quick. So we will decide on that soon. And we should be able to get the engine compartment uh, blasted as well as some other areas of the car blasted. I would say within the next, you know, Hopefully two weeks, at the very most three weeks. So we can get all that done. We got to get the engine compartment stripped down the rest of the way, like I said, after the dash is out, then that should be easy. Um, and then I want to find a manual steering box. That shouldn't be hard to do. I think I know where I can get one. Um, otherwise, if anybody has recommendations for, you know, budget-friendly um steering boxes definitely let me know i'd like manual steering um i don't need it to be quick ratio or any of that stuff i just need something that functions good that uh will couple up to um factory steering column and if i have to trim it a little bit or something or if i have to weld one of those um like u-joints it's kind of a thing on the end i could do that um i've been told that that's a lot a lot better uh, setup than it was from the factory, so I'll be looking into that for sure. But we will kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. Another update. Um, made a deal on a 440. So you can go back one or two videos ago. I did a little uh, a short, just like a 15-second uh, video of the engine I'm buying running. So it's currently in a 1966 Charger. So the, the setup and everything and application will be the same. 
So that's uh, that's good as far as like oil pan and different clearances like that. Um, a 440 fits in here pretty easily, so that shouldn't be a big deal. But it's nice that uh, don't have to get a new oil pan or anything. And then in addition to the talk of an oil pan, it has a Mylodon 7-quart oil pan, so that's nice. It's a nice uh, little bonus. So, But it's a 1972 440. All stock, even a stock cam, stock everything. I mean, I think the carburetor is even stock. It was fully rebuilt, um, but it was all put back together with factory spec uh, components. So it's it's a good runner. Um, it is not going to be the, the end result for the No Name Nationals. Either we will put something else in or we will... Um, modify what's there but i'll tell you right away before before that engine uh goes in the car for i mean in in any form um it's getting better intake carb headers and a cam so that'll be immediate improvements because i'm not going to run the factory cam that's in that which is probably like a like a 430 lift cam which is nothing so in a factory like 440 Magnum cam is, I think, 450, so right around that range. So we're going to be doing something uh, a little over the 500 uh, range, so we'll be looking at that, and any recommendations are good. We'll be kind of just, might be something temporary, but uh, might be something a little lo more long-term. But moving on beyond that, um, moving backwards... I do have a torque converter that is from, it was from a 340 that was, it was spec'd out to be in a 70 CUDA with 340 at about um, 400 foot pounds of torque is what the car was built for. So, uh, and it's a 3000. So I've been trying to do a little bit of reading and by all means, if people know more than me, please put it in the comments. I don't know hardly anything about torque converter related things. And if people know the calculations or anything, let me know. Um, I don't know what that would be rated if put behind a 440 with, you know, near 500 foot pounds of torque after everything's kind of said and done. Um, but definitely let me know. I've been told that it would be Right around uh, 3,600, 3,500, 3,600, maybe 3,700, and that would be good. Um, and it's what I have. So, and that just kind of, and I need to remind myself and remind others that that fits the theme of the car. The name of the car is Cheap Thrill. We're doing this as much on a budget as possible. We're going to be doing a lot of new parts related to it, but at the same time, we're trying to keep it low buck. So, yes, I know I could go and get a torque converter spec'd out exactly to the car and everything, but it's more money. I know it would be better. I know it would be a preferred way of going, but I'd rather use what I have if I can. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, behind that, I have a big black 727 here that was running in a car, um in a car that was being parted out and I got the transmission from it. So I don't, um, I never heard it run. I never saw it run. I never saw it move. So I'm not sure I exactly trust it. I trust the guy that had it, but I'd like to go through it and rebuild it. That being said, um, if people have recommendations for maybe a, a small step up or a small shift kit or something like that, I want to keep it factory style in the way of um, pattern. I don't want reverse pattern. I don't want manual valve body. I don't want any of that. So, But if people have recommendations for um, a shift kit or light budget-friendly modifications for a big block 727, definitely let me know. And then moving beyond backwards beyond that, um, towards the back of the car, I just picked up a set of 456 gears so that is kind of cool because the original car that this is um, 
kind of a tribute to, I guess you could say, the original car had 456 gears. So that's cool. And it will be cool for the No Name Nationals for 8th Mile. It should be a good, uh, good gear set. So we will go with that. But that's kind of the driveline situation. Um, tires, I don't know yet. I've been told that in the factory wheel tubs, you can fit a 275, 60, 15 as far as like a street tire. I really like that size of a tire. Um, but if we had to go with like a 255, 60, we could do that too. And that'll just be for like street driving. When it comes to no-name nationals, I'll probably have slicks. So we will see what we can do in regards to that. But as far as next steps with the car, for the next couple weeks, I want to get the front end blasted and like the door jams and stuff like that. Uh, maybe around the windows and some other kind of hard to sand areas. It just saves a lot of time. Um, it does cost money to blast stuff, of course, but you're gonna you're gonna save yourself a lot of time in the end because you don't you just you don't want to end up sanding every single nook and cranny and all that stuff. It just takes so much time. So we will do what we can with that and then get the whole car and epoxy primer um and this is after the metalwork stage within the next week and a half i want all the metalwork done i just need to do the passenger side quarter and the outer wheelhouse it has a little spot i need to do and then the driver's side needs a couple little tiny patches and then the outer wheelhouse there is one little spot where it touches the quarter that it needs some rust repair, as well as one patch in the rear passenger floor pan. So there's going to be uh, stuff to do there, but the metal work should be done within the next, you know, 10 days or so. And then within the next week after that, front end of the car and um, kind of as much of the car as I can, I'd like to blast, but it does cost money. I do it myself, but it still does cost money and time, and especially with the compressor, uh, it's not very fuel efficient on the diesel and stuff, so it does take up a lot of time, a lot of money, and it is um, a little bit of a process to clean up afterwards. But then I need to go through, knock off all of the loose rust off of the floor and the trunk, and then treat it, and then get that painted, uh, primed and then painted. Um, it's going to be white, just like the rest of the car. And I probably would even maybe paint the, the inner quarter structures and related things. And then moving on to the interior, uh, now that the dash is out, I can, um, well, I can drop the steering column, I can drop the dash, and then I can prep and clean the whole firewall area, which looks nice and clean overall, but there's probably a little bit of work to do there and that's going to get painted as well. So that is the plan in regards to that. And then, like I said, I'm getting a different dash frame to, um, to restore and I'm, I'm leaning towards black as the color. And then regarding that, um, I don't think I'll be putting a headliner in it immediately as far as when the car starts running and driving. So I'm going to strip the inside of that as much as possible and treat it. And I'm going to paint it black. So it's going to look, from a, from a quick glance, it's going to look like it's got a black headliner in it, but it, it doesn't, obviously. So we will, we will do that. And then, of course, painting the trunk and then the package tray area and all that. And then we'll be after the areas of the car are blasted and then we'll be um, sanding down all flat areas and related things and starting body work that's going to take probably that's probably going to be the largest um, piece of uh, piece of work as far as time like this of course there's going to be body work to do around the welding areas but like this quarter is going to be a little bit of a little bit of work. I don't know if you can see on camera, but it is pushed in here a little bit. So there's going to be work to do there. There's going to be work to do everywhere. There's going to be a lot of little things and it's all going to add up and it all is going to be time consuming. And then 
I'll remind myself and everyone else of the goal time-wise is I want to drive this car to Mopars in the Park, which is in Stillwater, Minnesota. It's our local Mopar show uh, once a year, Midwest Mopars in the Park. It's June 3rd, 4th, and 5th this year. So I want the car on the road in May, get all the little bugs and things worked out. Suspension, I don't know what to do about that. It seems to be good as far as just the overall look of it and the overall way the car rolls and steers, but obviously it's not under load and it's not underweight. So um, definitely probably going to end up taking it apart and doing new bushings and I want to get a manual steering box for the car. Um, so yeah, and then once, once, the, once the engine bay is blasted and uh, base coat and then clear coat, I'm going to, whenever... Whenever uh, time fits, as far as timeline of everything, put the 440 and automatic in it. The car will probably run with the 440 and automatic and everything before the car's in final paint. Um, but it won't probably be out on the road before final paint. And then we need to decide what we're doing as far as trim. It's a Belvedere 2 has all the side trim and I got to put it all back. So I want to, I'm going to have to go through the trim and figure out which pieces go where and what's good and what's bad. So there's just a lot of little things to do. Um, and then I need to get my cabinet blaster working again for little stuff like hood hinges and door hinges and all that stuff. But that's kind of a, rough plan rough update as far as uh how i'm looking at things and then we'll just kind of be taking it step by step like i said the largest the largest obstacle is going to be the bodywork i'm not i'm not concerned with the bodywork as far as um the difficulty of it and getting it done i'm just concerned about the time that it's going to take so but that's, that's a little ways out. First step that I want to get done, like I said, over the next probably 10 days, I want to get all the metal work done. And then once the weather warms up and queers a little bit and I get some material here, I want to get the thing blasted as much as I can. And then it's going in primer. After, obviously, the welding is all done, it'll be going in primer. And it'll be... The front end will be base coat clear coat as well as the floor and the trunk and all of the inside parts and then it's onto the exterior sheet metal bodywork and then moving on from there and then moving on to uh, engine transmission and driveline components and interior so way easier said than done but i think we're making pretty good progress so far and if you guys have ideas or recommendations Definitely let me know and definitely check out that little video of that 440 running because that's what's going to most likely end up in here. Um, and there will be some modifications done to that as I talked about. So, But anyways, that's kind of just the rough little plan going forward. Um, so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. And I will keep you guys updated. I'll be trying to do videos um, as frequently as possible because, first of all, I enjoy doing it and I enjoy just giving you guys updates and reading your guys' comments. Um, but beyond that, it's uh, also a little bit of motivation. So, anyways, I guess that's pretty much it, and I will see you guys in the next one.